Democracy. Facing down pessimistic politics with realistic optimism. So, like we said, Florida is now using PragerU content in public school classrooms. Making it available and encouraging educators to utilize Dennis Prager, quote unquote, university right wing unhinged clips in a classroom to indoctrinate. That's what this is, to indoctrinate children with lies and propaganda about the whitewashed version of history. And we want you to be fully informed about what this means. So we're going to start with a promotional video that the PragerU CEO, Melissa, Marissa, sorry, Streit, posted on the Prager account on YouTube, um, notifying parents her excitement that Florida is now going to be using PragerU videos. And I want you to (laughs) listen to the language that this woman uses when she is describing the content that will now be shown in public schools. Friends, I'm ecstatic to make this groundbreaking announcement. PragerU is now making it into schools. A couple of years ago, we launched PragerU Kids because parents have been frustrated. Teachers have been frustrated. We have seen that our schools have been hijacked by the left. They have been politicized. They have been used by union bosses. They have been doing everything under the sun, not for our children. And so we have launched PragerU Kids and we started providing great edutainment, educational entertainment for children across America. But we didn't just stop there. Now we're actually making turnkey curriculum content for your schools. And the state of Florida just announced that we are now becoming an official vendor. This means that if you are a teacher in Florida, you cannot be fired for using PragerU content. You can also rely on our resources in your classrooms. And we are just getting started. Additional states are signing up. Go to our website, PragerU.com, and find out which other states have been working closely with us so that we become an approved vendor in additional states across America. You should know that the left is trying to fight us. They're trying to take us out of the schools and we need your support. So please go to PragerU.com and sign our petition to keep PragerU in schools. We know that you know that our content is clean, it's great, it's patriotic. We teach civics, we teach financial literacy, we teach goodness and wisdom and all of the things that should have been taught in schools but are not. And so help us stay in schools, help us make it into your schools, Go to Prageru.com, find out how you can get involved and help us fight for America's kids. A lot of, like, do we need to teach patriotism? Do we need to teach those values? I mean, is that the, the, the role of education? Aren't we supposed to teach the truth, the accurate history, not propaganda that they're celebrating, that they... They're making it into schools. And oh, by the way, now you can't be fired. <laughs> what? what is happening? Yeah, it's it's scary stuff, especially with the... I'm serious. I spent like two hours watching Prager uh, you Better videos. you than me, sister. And, <laughs> and let me tell you, I mean, they have interesting segments. Not that they're good. I'm saying that they are created to appeal to kids. They're very colorful. Yeah. They have a series that we're going to we're going to play a lot from Leo and Layla. They travel all over the world. They time travel. They have a little remote where they type in a place or a person and then they travel there and they talk to Martin Luther King Jr., you know, all these different people which Booker we're, we're going to get to. Yeah, but they also have a segment where it's like around the world, I think is what it's called, and they go to different locations. You know, the one in Canada, they criticize um, the healthcare system in Canada. Well, of course. And in um, in L.A., they talked about uh, the police. That was the, the topic of the one in Los Angeles. And we're not going to play a, a large part of this, but I, I want to give the audience a flavor for how they describe... George Floyd. We know how George Floyd was killed by Derek Chauvin. He was uh, choked. His, his Derek Chauvin's knee was on George Floyd's neck for you know ten minutes. We know how he died. Derek Chauvin convicted of murder for this offense. Right now, 
now that you know that and your your memory has been refreshed, I want you to hear how the Prager kids lesson will teach kids about George Floyd. Then, in May 2020, George Floyd, a black man who resisted arrest and was held under the knee of a police officer, died while in custody. <laughs> died while in custody. I was not ready for that. Died while in custody Resi by a man who was convicted for his murder. Not for manslaughter or whatever lesser charge. Murder. Mm -hmm. But this is what they want to teach children. I mean, if there were, we could end it right there and everybody could be satisfied that our claim that this is propaganda and lies and just a conservative narrative, they would get it. Yeah, and I mean, they're going to teach kids this. They're going to teach young people yeah. that like some teacher in Florida is excited that they're able to show these videos and a kid may learn about George Floyd for the first time from this video, and that is what they're going to come away believing. It's horrifying. But it doesn't stop there, because like I said, this Leo and Layla segment where they you know, go into the past and meet people, they are brother and sister. Layla is older. Leo is younger. It's not necessarily relevant. But in this specific instance where they travel to meet Booker T. Washington, the lesson is supposed to be about independence because Leo is like struggling to do things for himself mm. and his sister is finding it annoying and wanting to help him learn the value of independence. And so in this clip, you're going to hear a lot of conservative values and conservative themes coming through. And I wonder if you'll be able to pick up on them. We're really sorry that you have to deal with segregation and racism. Your sympathy is nice, Layla, but know that you have nothing to be sorry about. You and Leo have done nothing wrong and have indeed been quite respectful. Future generations are never responsible for the sins of the past. Okay, I'll keep doing my best to treat everyone well and won't feel guilty about historical stuff. Good, you shouldn't. You and Leo will probably never experience oppression at the level we blacks do now, but someday you will have a teacher or coach or boss who treats you unfairly and makes life more difficult than it should be. By training yourself now to be self-reliant, you'll be ready for it when it comes. So, if we can take care of ourselves by learning skills and working hard and improving who we are, then it won't be so bad if life gets unfair. And it can all start with you making yourself some snacks. It's kind of like being able to do more for yourself not only gives you freedom, but also gives you a shield against people trying to hold you back. That is exactly right. I hope this is the lesson you kids came looking for. It was such a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for talking to us, Mr. Washington. Uh... So, of course, it starts with the... You don't need to feel guilty about stuff that happened in the past, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, well, then I'll definitely not feel guilty about historical stuff, Mr. Washington. <laughs> well, they're obsessed with the guilt angle. Yes. Obs uh, conservatives, obsessed with yeah. white guilt, with guilt in general about uh, our history, our past. And look, I'm, I, I don't feel guilty about what took place. I didn't have a hand in it, but do I feel badly? Yeah. Do I feel dismayed do i feel helpless sometimes yeah yes absolutely but it's it's this twisting of the narrative giving people permission i believe that it, that if you don't have to feel guilty then you don't even have to feel bad about it it's just like ah who cares i had nothing to do with that those people just do your thing be, be the other part of this is the, the clip that didn't the part of the clip that didn't get played i was upstairs getting a drink when you were listening to it he, it was Booker T. Washington explaining his founding of Tuskegee University. And they don't even cover why is it that a black university had to be founded by a black man. They don't even they don't even gloss over the fact that blacks couldn't go to white schools. That's why there are historically uh black colleges and universities in the United States. They, they don't even oh they, well, just he took it upon himself. Wow, what resilience. Good for you, Booker T. Washington. Right. Well, and I think you're on to something with the, it's not really about guilt. It's that they don't want people to feel bad because then you would be obligated to do something yeah. to support 
equality, to support policies that would have people getting reparations. I mean, whatever the case may be. To right some of the historical wrongs that have been committed upon marginalized and oppressed groups in the United States. Right. And so it's, it's, it's no coincidence that you heard two messages at the same time, that you don't need to essentially feel bad about the historical wrongs of the past. And that really the answer is to be self-reliant. Yeah. And to, um, you know, when life gets unfair, at least you can always help yourself if you're self-reliant. Right. Right. So no matter how hard things get, no matter how much discrimination you face. Bootstraps, bootstraps, bootstraps. Exactly. As long yeah. as you have created a self-reliant character, yeah. then you're going to be fine. Why yeah. do you need anyone to help you? Why do you need a government program? Why do you need policies to create equity? Ha- you should just be self-reliant. Happy ending. Right. Yeah. So we see the indoctrination coming through. Remember, Florida teachers will be able to play this in their classrooms to teach people how life works. And now <laughs> you won't even be worried about being fired. Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> good good for them. So one clip that I didn't get, because again, you, you said like I didn't play a segment that really jumped so out long. at you. Some of these videos are like eight, nine, ten minutes long, right? Yeah, sometimes 13 minutes. And there was one where they went back in time to meet Martin Luther King Jr. I forgot what the lesson was supposed to be about this. Oh, uh, Layla stands up to bullies on behalf of her friend and Mm. needs some reassurance that she did the right thing and didn't go overboard by raising her voice because it's about nonviolence. Oh, right. Yes. (laughs) And uh, they go back to... April 3rd, 1968. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this date rings a bell for you, but it's the day before MLK was assassinated. Right. They didn't even warn him. By a white supremacist. They didn't didn't even warn him. him. (laughs) They're going to go back to the day before he's assassinated and they're not even... By the way, just to put a bug in your ear, I mean, it's like a Marty Doc... Uh, Doc Brown situation where you, no Marty don't give me the note I don't want to know <laughs> yeah they were worried about the butterfly effect um, MLK was giving a speech to support the Memphis sanitation workers strike it's his I've been to the mountaintop speech and they stand there discussing with him the I have a dream speech the march on Washington and in the the video th- their version of Martin Luther King Jr. is talking about how supportive people of every race were and how they showed up to the march of on washington really yes and i found it so remarkable because of course we know there's there's polling from the 60s you know gallup polls has been doing polling on this this is something we talked about a lot on this show to put in perspective we the republicans have whitewashed the history of the civil rights movement absolutely they, they act like everybody was on board the whole time, that even during that time there was massive support, and the polling does not bear that out. It was very unpopular in the... The thing that's super popular and accepted now was very unpopular back then. Yeah, so in uh, May to June of 1961, they did a poll where they asked if people think sit-ins at lunch counters and freedom buses or other demonstrations by black people will will hurt or help their chances of being integrated into the South. And 57% said it would hurt. So not supportive. A vast majority, almost 60% said these things that are that are just uh, lionized now universally understood as good and m- moving the needle were looked upon as no 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 that's the wrong way to protest if that rings a bell it should and i hope it does because that's the narrative we hear now with every race protest related to inequality inequity uh black lives matter police brutality it's no 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 don't protest like that. No. Oh, you want to silently take a knee while the national... No, 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 no. That's the wrong way to do it. They never say what the right way is, but it's the same thing that was happening in the 60s. No, that's the wrong way to protest, even though those things that were the quote-unquote wrong way to protest actually made a difference and got us to where we are right now. Right. And the March on Washington happened in August 1963, And Gallup did another poll in June of 1963, so before the March on Washington, Mm -hmm. and they said, do you think mass demonstrations by black people are more likely to help or more likely to hurt the cause for racial equality? And in June 1963, 60% said hurt. Yeah. 
And then a year later, it went up to 74%. Yeah. It increased from 60 to 74% in one year. Yeah. So people like to think back on this time and say that there was, you know, widespread support for Martin Luther King Jr. and for these demonstrations, but no, there was not. Yeah, no, it, there was not. The other thing that people like to do is, look, oh, I would for sure be on the right side of history. Well, if you're not on the right side now, you, there's not a fucking chance you'd been on the right side then. Right. If you're not fighting for racial justice now and social justice now, you would have been part of the wrong side of history then. Yeah. It. I know it's completely different, but it's reminding me of the Sinead O'Connor discourse right now, actually, because yeah. she just passed away. And the clip of her on Saturday Night Live tearing up the photo of the Pope is making the rounds. And at the time, she was... She was banned from SNL for life, for yeah, one thing. Right. And widely criticized. All kinds of celebrities came forward to mock her. And Even Madonna made a joke and tore some other picture of something else up. Yeah. It, it, lame. And of course, it was a protest for abuse in the Catholic Church. And we know how correct... Yeah. Sinead O'Connor was to tear up a photo of the Pope in given, protest. given the widespread abuse in, in the Catholic the Church. The thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, abused and raped children at the hands of Catholic clergy. So my point there being that a lot of people are coming out supporting her now that she's dead, but right. at the time it was very controversial and she d she didn't have a lot of support. Yeah. So it is helpful, I think, to think about these things because we can forget that we should be supporting the difficult things now. Yeah. Um, another topic, I know you're just like, uh, so excited to hear <laughs> what is the next thing? It's Columbus. Oh, of course they did a video on Columbus. It's Columbus. So again, this is Leo and Layla, the time traveling kids, and they decided to go back in time and learn a history lesson from Columbus. From Columbus. I'm sorry, Mr. Columbus, but I heard at school that you spoiled paradise and you brought slavery and murder to peaceful people. Leo? <laughs> sorry. It's what I read and heard at school. Caramba! Those are some accusations. The place I discovered was beautiful, but it wasn't exactly a paradise of civilization, and the native people were far from peaceful. But you just said the Taino were peaceful. They pretty much are. But there are other tribes who aren't. The Taino I had met had cuts and scars and bruises all over them. I asked why, and they told me about the Caribs, who are vicious, warring cannibals. Cannibals? Like they- Eat people, see. Whoa. Right? Hey, all the things that are bad in the world I come from, jealousy, lying, murder, war, it all exists in the land I just found too. But in Europe, we draw the line at things like eating people and human sacrifice. Some of the native folks from where I just left do those things regularly. So, these people in your time who think it was a peaceful paradise are misinformed. Or lying. Yeah, but what about slavery? You didn't deny that. Deny? No. Slavery is as old as time and has taken place in every corner of the world even amongst the people I just left. Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? I don't see the problem. Well, in our time, we view slavery as being evil and terrible. Ah, magnifico, that's wonderful. I am glad humanity has reached such a time. But you said you're from 500 years in the future? How can you come here to the 15th century and judge me by your standards from the 21st century? For those in the future to look back and do this is, well, stupid though. Are you calling me dumb? Certainly not. I can tell you're a very smart young lady, but the idea of throwing away the past because of your present values is, listen. I love and am thankful for the ancient Greeks, but they did lots of things that here in 1493 I do not agree with. They permitted lifestyles and worship gods that, as a Christian, I think is very bad. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't respect and honor all the incredible and amazing things they did. So good and bad is based on the time you live in? That is a great question. I told you I knew you were smart. Some things are clearly bad, no matter when they happen. 
But for other things, before you judge, you must ask yourself, what did the culture and society of the time treat as no big deal? Not everyone can time travel as you do and see how normal becomes very not normal. So who knew? <laughs> who knew that we would get content from Dennis Prager making the case for moral relativism? Yeah, no kidding. Normally, it's moral absolutism from Dennis Prager because he's a religious fundamentalist that believes God has determined what is inherently right and wrong. Yeah, oh yeah, very very explicit about it. Yeah, but yeah. now suddenly we need to incorporate the cultural contexts yeah, yeah, in yeah. which people come from to determine what is right and wrong. Could it be a more problematic I mean, the only way to make that accent worse is like, a, I'm a punch you in the face. Uh, you know what I mean? He's like a, he's like a, the, like the Chef Boyardee guy in the, in the fifties in the commercials. Yeah. The accents are not strong. <laughs> not strong. Let me, let me just enlighten a few people who may not know a lot about uh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, we're going to time travel right now no, and meet him? Well, we're going to go back 16 years to a Guardian article. So yeah, a little oh, bit of okay. time travel. Um, <laughs> Christopher Columbus was known as a maniac and an a, abusive psycho by his own contemporaries. He was made governor of this Spanish colony and ended up in shackles brought back to Spain to face trial. He was brutal and monstrous, even by the people who were contemporary, like this idea that, oh, we look at him this way, but back then everybody, how about the dub? Oh, the give me the D. Oh, you got about to do, watch it, eat it as a spaghetti. Wait, were you the one doing the voice? Were you paid <laughs> by Dennis Prager? Let me read a little bit from this article. Um, Lost document reveals Columbus as tyrant of the Caribbean. Christopher Columbus, the man credited with discovering the Americas, was a greedy and vindictive tyrant who saved some of the most violent punishments for his own followers, according to a document uncovered by Spanish historians. As governor and viceroy of the Indies, Columbus imposed iron discipline on the first Spanish colony in the Americas in what is now the Caribbean country of the Dominican Republic. Punishments included cutting off people's ears and noses, parading women naked through the streets and selling them into slavery. And once again, before I read these final three paragraphs, these are not indigenous people. If he's treating his own, the people who share his culture and his heritage and his religion, if he's treating them like this, how in the fuck do you think he was treating what we commonly refer to as Indians or the indigenous? Mm -hmm. Columbus's government was characterized by a form of tyranny. Consuelo Varela, a Spanish historian who has seen the document, told journalists, one man caught stealing corn had his nose and ears cut off, was placed in shackles, and was then auctioned off as a slave. A woman who dared to suggest that Columbus was of lowly birth was punished by his brother Bartolome, who had also traveled to the Caribbean. She was stripped naked, the woman who accused him, or said this of him, was stripped naked and paraded around the colony on the back of a mule. Bartolome ordered that her tongue be cut out, said Miss Varela. Christopher congratulated him for defending the family. So, according to Dennis Prager and Prager U, a wonderful man. Oh, it's a no problem. A habit de de. But, you know, the, 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 the facts of history and the documentation that has been laboriously poured over by historians tells a different picture. In fact, like I said, he was arrested and brought back to Spain in shackles on a ship and fired from his job as governor and viceroy of the Indies. Well, and this was actually a, a prominent theme throughout the videos whenever slavery came up is that they would talk about, like you heard in this clip, that slavery is as old as time, it existed all over, and that it was just the way things were, and so how can you come back and judge us? And we've we've had conversations like this with people in, in recent months, and I think anytime you are talking about presidents, for example, this comes up sure. too, right? And the thing is, the um, enslaved people, they 
Probably knew it was wrong. <laughs> right. There, there certainly was a faction who knew it was wrong. Listen, absolutely, the, the farther you go back in time, there's going to be a period where it just was the way. And the more modern you get, the less that excuse can be made. But that's not, there is no nuance here with the Dennis Prager curriculum that is now fully approved, free from arrest or firing, excuse me, um, for teaching in elementary schools in Florida. Yeah, I also want to say that clip reminded me of my own indoctrination because I was raised by white supremacist parents and... Um, I remember in fourth grade, my mom actually came to the school and demanded that I sit outside of the classroom during a lesson on Native people. And part of that was because when I got home, you know, we were told the quote unquote true history that the school wasn't teaching us right. about how violent the population was and how they scalped blonde women for their pretty blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right. um, I mean, of course, this little cartoon is less severe than that. But really, it's of the same spirit, I think. They're yeah, trying absolutely. to get at the same things, which is to justify horror yeah. by indoctrinating and telling kids lies. So this last one that we're going to get to, this last clip, it's going to blow your mind. I almost want to play it and have you guess what it could possibly be about. Should we do that? Let's Should just we just play it and then you guys can, as you're listening to it, like think of the political topic that they could be getting at here. Timon, Clara, and grandfather Jakob are encouraging Anya by sharing their own stories of perseverance. Timon remembers having to meet people late at night in a freezing cellar to avoid the communist authorities. But that didn't stop him from sharing his ideas. Grandfather Jakob tells her about the Warsaw Uprising, when the city's Jews fought back against the Nazis. Jakob remembers helping smuggle food, blankets, and even ammunition to the Jewish resistance fighters through sewer tunnels. Through her family's stories, Anya is realizing that fighting oppression is risky and that it always takes courage. Do you want to guess? Well, I know because I see the label of the clip. Oh, okay. But there's, if I didn't know, there's no fucking way in a thousand years that I would have guessed that it's about climate change. Yeah, so <laughs> the character Anya that they're that they're talking about there, she learns about climate change in school and her parents are climate change deniers and so she becomes a, a climate change denier and then she's ostracized by her peers who barely talk to her mm. anymore once they learn that she <laughs> is a climate change denialist and so it helps her to learn from her her various family members about being ostracized. Oh, and, and oppression. Yes. Yeah, because that that's the oppressed group in America. It's science deniers. Yeah, and so she feels comforted by her grandfather's story about the Warsaw Uprising uh, when the, the city's Jewish people fought back against Nazis. Wow. Because she can really take that lesson to heart and take it with her to school as she's being ostracized by her peers for denying climate change. <laughs> Welcome to the facts, children of Florida. So, Florida, what are you going to do? I mean, this is some scary stuff. Also, what have you done? You elected Ron DeSantis as, pre as, as your president, as, as your governor. What have you done? What have you done? <laughs>